In this video, I show you what basing material I use to make this structure for a 20 mil 28 millimeter wargaming terrain. It's free and it's recycled and uh, you can find it anywhere. So unlike most of my other videos, I want to start out right now by just saying a, a quick little warning and a, uh, a head check to make sure that you know kind of what you're getting into here. You got to make sure that you're going to be really safe because we're going to be heating plastics. And so you got to be comfortable with doing that either um, outside in a toaster oven or inside with extremely well ventilation. Nothing, uh, there's no fumes whatsoever, but again, uh, it depends on the types of plastic you're using and it depends on what you're you're doing which we'll go into details here so if you're under 18 make sure your parents know about your know that you're going to do this and if you are uh, over 18 just make sure that you're comfortable with uh, warming up plastic so that they're melting because um, it can get dangerous quick and safety has always got to be kind of the primary so uh, continue on, just make sure that you're doing this uh, safely. And this is extremely safe as long as you take the right precautions. And so we'll move right into talking about a little bit about the plastics here that we're going to be using. You want to look for HDPE plastic. This is the kind of plastic that you want to use and that you'll be using in this video uh, solely. And so uh, to go along with my warning, I wanted to kind of let you know that it's not really the plastic that's toxic. It's more kind of the substance that this plastic is holding. And so in my video here that you're going to watch, it's, it was a bunch of water bottles. Really, there's no residue left over from a water bottle that's going to hurt you when you warm it up. If you're going to use shampoo bottles or um, pill bottles or medicine bottles or anything else that holds something that's going to leave a residue, you're going to want to wash that extremely well. So make sure that you're using clean plastic and I felt safe using uh, just water bottles so I would highly recommend water bottles. Uh, another type of plastic here is you can see is the LDPE which is not really the plastic you want to look for. You're going to want to look for the HDPE so just make sure it has that HDPE symbol and you should be golden to uh, start cutting this stuff up and uh, melting it down to use as a base. All right and so now that we've got that stuff out of the way you can actually see <clears throat> what I've done with my HDPE plastic, I've taken all the labels off, all the glue off. There's no residue whatsoever in this plastic. And I've cut it down to really thin little sheets. Uh, the thicker this stuff is, the, the longer it's going to take to melt. And so I kind of just cut mine down in really thin sheets so that I can kind of layer it until the, I got kind of a thickness that I like. And so you can see it there, really thin milk jug kind of sheets i make sure you wear your gloves because the oven you're going to preheat your oven to about 325 degrees you either use a toaster oven outside or uh, i used a, an oven in a well ventilated area and this is just about after about five minutes or so you can see that it's starting to get a little bit squishy but there's still kind of a fogginess to it and so 20 minutes or so later i came back to check and you can see that it's a little bit clear now and it's a lot more kind of gooey and tacky. There's only a certain point where it's not going to melt anymore. And this is about the point that I found that it wasn't going any further. And so I knew that this was about the time it was ready to go. Again, the oven is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so I'm getting some gloves on now and I'm turning the oven off and I'm getting, well, I, I don't think I've turned the oven off yet. I've kept the oven going and I've, Got some gloves and a towel and I've got the safety gear on and I'm bringing it into my lab and just got some wax paper covered on both boards and I'm going to kind of bring the board down and squish it. And with these clamps, I'm hoping that what's going to happen is it's just going to kind of compress the material a little bit more because I wanted something a little bit more compressed than just kind of it sitting there. And I'm, I'm thinking after these clamps are on and it can kind of dry it's gonna compress that material just a little bit to give it a little bit more firmness 
and a little bit more kind of a flat look that I'm going for. And every so often, about five, 10 minutes, I'd come by and I'd tighten these clamps a little bit more just so that I'm tightening it and compressing that material as much as I can. Um, I was actually surprised at how easy this was. Um, only about 20 minutes in the oven and then a couple hours to kind of let it cool off. I didn't, wasn't super concerned with time. I wasn't rushing. And so I just let it sit for an hour or two to cool off to temperature. I think it would probably cool off a lot faster, but uh, this was my first time doing it and I figured I'd just let it sit and unveiling it. Nothing has stuck to the parchment paper. It was a little bit warm to the touch, but not really that bad. Um, nothing I couldn't touch without gloves at all, but it definitely was warm. You could feel a little bit of heat coming off of it, but nothing that would burn you. And so, uh, again, just kind of pulling off the, the parchment paper. And at this time I realized how sturdy this stuff really is. It was almost impossible to bend and you slap it on the table as hard as you can. And this stuff would not bend whatsoever. You can see me even throwing it down, hitting it, trying to break it, and it just wouldn't budge. Um, heat is really this only weakness. I did notice that it was really a slick surface, and so I was kind of concerned with how glue might stick to this, and how am I going to stick things on top of it in terms of making a wargaming terrain. So I'm doing some tests here. I sanded the whole thing, and then I uh, primed a little bit with just uh, some primer to see how that would affect the glue and the the viscosity and I'm testing several different types of glue here. I'm testing the PVA glue and uh, super glue, I believe, and an epoxy. And I use the same materials for all these tests. It was just kind of a little resin piece that I had cast and then a chunk of foam board. So you can hear, see here I'm using the foam board and the resin on both the super glue or the both the spray painted side and the non spray painted side. And again, this is just kind of a test to see what is going to hold and stick to this HTPE because I've heard that that's one of the issues is that it's hard to find something that would actually stick and adhere to HTPE. And so I wanted to kind of, before I even built anything, I wanted to kind of see and test. And here I am kind of just putting down some more white glue, just like an Elmer's glue with some test uh, ground coffee. Uh, it's just old coffee that I had. I dried out and let it sit uh, for 24 hours. And I came back after 24 hours to kind of see how these things were. The non spray paint side seemed to glue really well. In fact, the non spray painted side held up, as you'll see right now, a lot better than it did with the part that I used the primer on. But the non spray painted side, I after this test, I had no you can see here it is trying to take the foam core off. The foam core actually broke before the glue gave. And so I knew at that point that non primered HDPE would pretty much hold what I needed it to in terms of getting a structure built on top of it. There's a little bit of uh, stuff that comes off, but that's kind of normal when you glue that off. It wasn't protected with a little Mod Podge or anything. I just, kind of glued it on and let it sit. And you can see how hard it was to get the uh, glue off. And the white glue seemed to be one of the hardest things. And right there, there's the spray painted side. So you can see how quick that came off. It really, the glue just stuck to the spray paint and the spray paint just peeled right off. It was super easy to get. So when you do this, you'll want to do it. Um, the five minute epoxy gave it a little bit of trouble, but again, uh, at the bottom, as you can see, it just pulled the spray paint off. And so you're dealing with not an issue of the glue adhering, but the spray paint adhering at this point. Um, I don't think there was an issue with painting it. I think it was just an issue with, there was just so much pressure I was putting on it that the spray paint couldn't hold with the HDPE. So I found that non-treated HDPE, just kind of take a sandpaper and sand it down to make the edges a little bit rough. That was about all you needed to do to get something built onto this thing. Um, 
yeah and then after that i kind of went to town the next video i got i'll show you kind of how i built this but i wanted to kind of start out just a little bit as an experimentation of what i did to show kind of what i did with the base and what it will look like when it's completed i think it worked out really well there's a little bit of a rock to it but i think that was due to the fact that i uh, spray painted this outside and it was a hot day and so the HTPE got a little bit of a warp from the heat. I don't think that was anything with the way that it was bending in relation to the glue. I think it was more in relation to the working temperatures and me leaving it outside after I primed it that uh, it got that little warp. So uh, as I said again, let's stay tuned for the next video and I'll show you kind of what we did to build this little base. But um, this is just a kind of a quick video to show you what I used uh, as the base structure to this building. So always please like and subscribe and um, we will see you next time.